Yes, you guys, welcome back. I'm in the FC. This is Blue Lions TV, and today I'm here to bring you guys another New Zealand video. In the video today, we're going to discuss the latest news surrounding Timo Vana, Antonio Rudiger, Frank Kessie, as well as the score that has been registered for this season's Premier League. So I hope you guys definitely do enjoy. We've got a ton of things to break down and discuss. And before I get into anything, I want to give you guys an explanation behind why I haven't been in like this whole past week. Um, to be honest with you guys, it's been a combination of many, many things. A combination of having to get my hands bandaged up. I had like a little accident. I cut my hand against some glass, which kind of sliced it open a little bit. On top of that too, I got my second COVID vaccine too. That took me out a little bit as well. And near the end, I just needed a few more days to just, uh, you know, take some time off. Uh, it's been quite intense, of course, covering that entire trans window. I spent some time reading things, um, you know, just trying to boost my knowledge a bit more, you guys, working on things behind the scenes as well, and, you know, I always had the intention of coming back later this week. So, yeah, I'm back. I'm sorry I've been away. I know some of you guys have been missing me. Don't worry, man, I am back. And, of course, I'm going to take things off straight away. So, if you like today's video, if you have to see me back, smash that like button. Without wasting any more time, we kick things off, and let's discuss Chelsea's Premier League squad that got confirmed for this season. Now, there were some surprises in the squad announcement, you guys. Let's scroll down and let's look at the squads for this season. And as we can see, some standard ones, as we already know, we're seeing familiar phases like Kepa, Christensen, etc, etc. But some of the surprising ones we're seeing are Lewis Baker, we're seeing Malang Saab, we're seeing loftus Cheek, as well as Ross Barkley, who isn't the number eight anymore. He's now the number 18. He gave that shirt to Mateo Kovacic and yeah, that's basically our squad for this season. Now, of course, a lot of this comes down to the fact that players like Barkley couldn't get loan moves in the end. You know, uh, proposed loan moves to Burnley didn't work out in the end because Barkley's on a massive contract, I think over 100,000 a week and his form hasn't been too great. So let's see what happens. Let's see how he works with the squads. I'm assuming maybe in January, he might get some uh, loan moves happening there as well. But on top of that, so you guys, Manang Saar will be part of the squad too. Uh, for him, this is an amazing opportunity to just, you know, put himself in Tuchel's attention. Um, of course, when he was at Porto last season, it was a bit in different as he finished that campaign he finished it with their b team for like the second half of last season and you know on paper you're thinking to yourself okay he seems far away from getting any first team activity whatsoever however if he can impress too cool maybe he can get himself into like a carabao cup game etc etc something could happen but in my opinion i do think that maybe he isn't on the same level as most of his teammates um for me though remontada this season i'm hoping to see and you guys you, you know i'm unashamed with it you guys know that i like this player a lot of course i'm talking about ruben loftus cheek um i'll always sympathize behind while he uh how he got that injury in the first place um uh, it's just out of his control there's nothing he could do and for me i've always respected just how much he's fought to get himself back to his uh you know, not, I wouldn't say his physical peak, but to find some sense of formality with that. Um, you know, with the injury he had, you know, the guy couldn't even walk. All his muscles were gone, from, like I think the right side of his leg too. So he really had to go through a lot to get back. And I think working with the squad again, being in Cobham in that environment, hopefully that can boost his confidence. Hopefully working with better players too can do something. And who knows, if he impresses too cool, maybe he could get some chances this season. But regardless, you guys, that is a squad confirmed for this season. We now move on to the second story. So right now, we turn our attention to Serie A. We go to AC Milan and we're going to discuss Frank Kessie because reports mentally are suggesting that he is a very popular man in demand right now. Now, in 12 months time, his contract does officially expire. And of course, Milan are trying to get him to sign a new deal. Their offer so far has been 6 million euros. However, there has been a counter from his agent where he'd like his client to get at least 7 million euros a season plus 1.5 million in bonuses as well. At this point in time, it does seem like Milan is too much for them. You know, it's too high. The wage structure doesn't allow for things like that. And as we already saw with Donnarumma, we never thought he'd leave AC Milan, but in the end, there was too much of a big difference in valuation between the wages that he wanted and what AC Milan could provide him. So he went to Paris and Germain. And is it any surprise, one of AC Milan's best, most consistent players, who's got 12 months left in this deal, is gonna garner so much interest. Now, in steps us, and Paris and Germain. Now, reports coming out from Italian journalist Ramondi, he states that already we have proposed an 8 million euro a season contract to Kessie. 
I'd imagine that's gonna include a very healthy signing on fee and bonus as well. But on top of that, PSG have offered even more money up to the tune of 10 million euros per season. So, oh, it's looking quite interesting. Quite interesting. Frank Kessi, is he a world-class field player? I think he's definitely close to getting on that level. And last season, he got 13 goals and four assists playing in front of a defence, playing in that pivot. So you look at how we play, you see how we have our two midfielders in front of our defence as well. Kessie does tick quite a lot of boxes. We can't forget there has been long-term interest for him for many, many years. Uh, before he signed for AC Milan, when he signed for them from Atalanta, we made a bid at the time to try to persuade him to sign for us, but at the time he didn't feel too confident in regards to how many first opportunities he might get. And of course, picks AC Milan. Uh, I think that was the best decision he made. His game has really gone up levels. He's become a very good all-round player. Incredible versatility that he provides for his team as well. I mean, like I'm saying, man, he's playing in front of a defense in the pivot. 13 goals he's providing. And with Kessie, he can do so much. Uh, I love his powerful long shots. I think that's definitely something that we want to see from our midfield this season. Uh, so. He's signed on loan. We do know that he has very good shooting technique as well. And, you know, we're going to give him time and an opportunity to show what he can do. Um, he'll need a few more months, I'd imagine, maybe a few more games. I'm not going to be, you know, very harsh on him for a while because I understand, man, players need time to settle in. So let's see what he can provide. But regardless, at big teams like us, we're currently looking at every single option for every single position because we don't want to be in a place where we're getting left behind. So... Frank Kessie being available on a free, that's like the perfect business we do. If all we have to do is pay for his wages, you'd imagine that Marina and the team are going to be extremely happy because his player cost is going to be absolutely nothing. Time will tell though whether something does happen with this deal because Kessie has the numerous times that he could see himself staying at AC Milan forever. But if they can't afford him, then of course there are clubs who can provide much better alternatives for him that could boost and upgrade his career. And a player like Kessie on a free is extremely interesting. So you guys in the comments below, how do you actually feel about the story? It's not the first time we have been linked with him. And considering his contract ends in 12 months time, I feel like by the time January comes, when clubs can sign players and make those pre-contract agreements, we're gonna find out and get a lot more answers. So right now, we move on to the third story. And this story involves Timo Werner. Reports coming out from Germany, from Sport1, are stating that there's a 70% chance that Timo Werner could one day find himself in Bayern Munich. Of course, we know the connection immediately. This season, Werner managed by Nagelsmann, Werner's former manager at RB Leipzig. Nagelsmann is a great manager. He's had a strong start at Bayern so far, but for the team like Bayern, they need to prepare for the future. Currently with Lewandowski, numerous times now he has flirted with the idea of possibly leaving. And if that is the case, they need to find that alternative for him. Now, of course, a dream option would be Haaland, but considering just how much he's going to cost, his wages, agent fees, etc., etc., it just feels like that's a move that Bayern Munich just can't afford. So, one of the best alternatives to that would be Timo Werner. Now, what's quite interesting is that currently for the national team, Germany are playing like a 4 2 3 1. Werner's leading the line up front. He's got lots of creative players in behind him as well. And for me, I kind of think that's just the best way for him to play. Personally, I don't think his build up play is that amazing, but his movement in behind, you know, his timing of his runs, his uh, finishing is okay as well, too, even though we haven't seen great examples of that. But when you let him play in that manner, you tend to see what he can do. So, unsurprisingly, I definitely feel like. I would not be surprised if one day he made the return back to Germany, especially when there could be an option available if Lewandowski is not there anymore. Um, working under Nagelsmann, the manager that got the best out of him, that helped improve his game and just expand it more, I feel like he could do even more with him. And considering the space that you get to play with in the Bundesliga, that is definitely something that Werner's pace could take advantage of. And representing one of the best teams in Germany, I think that's a great thing to have on your CV, to be honest. Um, yeah, there's so many question marks though so many question marks uh, for me personally I'm gonna give Werner a chance this season I've got an open mind I think naturally when you sign Lukaku you know a man that acts as a focal point up front we've seen Werner profit from that working off of guys like Paulson at RB Leipzig so I definitely feel like that can create more space for Werner that can create more width for him as well and of course um, those two playing up front together could be quite interesting now we haven't seen them play just yet 
but the season's just only started, so it'd be crazy to just expect that. Okay, you know, he's gonna go, he's gonna get limited game time. I'm not gonna see him that much, but it is interesting. Uh, his sporting agency, known as 360 Sports, they also represent players like Upa Meccano, Sula, and of course, his former manager, Nagelsmann. Reports are suggesting that they are kind of encouraging him to maybe, you know, push for the move to Bayern Munich. Um, of course, you can see why that would benefit them quite a lot, but at the same time, why it would also benefit their client. Inverna. I think one thing's for certain though, uh, come the end of the season, we're going to get some definitive ideas and understanding of the players that will be in the long term plan uh, for the club up front. Um, looking at Werner, Pulisic, Hudson Adoy, they all kind of play in their best position down that left channel. You can't have three players fighting for one position. You know, one will have to go, one will have to move. And if Werner come the end of the season isn't playing consistently with Lukaku or getting lots of game time with him, what could his future actually be in the end? Um, I think it's quite interesting. There's so many question marks. I could literally spend like an entire video just talking about hypotheticals, but I just think right now, due to just how early the season is, due to how Werner's had very good form during this international break as well, you'd imagine that he's going to take that confidence back and let's see what he does and let's see what he brings. I'm going to keep him open mind, you guys. I think by the time January, Feb comes, I'll have clear understandings of how I'm feeling about players. But right now, we end things with the final story today, and we discuss Antonio Rudiger. At this point in time, there's still no recent developments or new developments with this contract extension talk. We do know that they held talks last month, his agent at Marina Ganovskaya. However, no agreement has been made at this point in time. Rudiger did state though that he would hold talks after the Euros ended. I guess he did fulfill them, but currently, it seems like there is a difference behind the valuation that Rudiger would want if he was to commit here. Uh, at this stage in his career, he's not one of the highest earners at the club, but now he's in this prime. This is the moment where you secure the biggest contracts in your career. And the reality is, if Rudiger was available in a free, I mean, wow, he'll be earning an absolute ton. Recently, Paris and Germain have been showing interest as well. We know that they have the financial capacity to fulfill whatever demands he has. With Rudiger, he could earn a massive contract, incredible one there, on top of a massive signing on bonus and fee as well that he might not necessarily get here. We've seen links suggesting that Real Madrid are also showing a lot of interest as well, and it really is no surprise now because I really do feel like Rudiger is on that world-class level. Um, I think his ball playing out from the back is some of the best. Um, those switch balls that he finds from deep. I mean, yeah, it's kind of crazy that the playmaking ability comes from our central defence and players like Rudiger and Thiago Silva, for example, but that's how good their passing range is. And yeah, these guys are just clear examples of, you know, the brilliance of ball playing defenders. But I don't know, I would be personally disappointed if we didn't keep Rudiger, which is very surprising because maybe a few seasons back, my impressions on him were, has, they were different, you guys. They just weren't the same. But that's testament to Rudiger for really improving as a player. Um, he really has in all aspects of his game, from his reading, his understanding, his positional sense as well. He's taken his game to the next level. And I've always ever said, if you show that improvement, of course, then I'm going to back you and I'm going to support you. Now he has 12 months left on his current deal. By the time January comes, that's when he can sign pre-contract agreements. And you'd imagine that Marina wants this deal to be tied down before then, because this is quite uncharacteristic. We never let players approach their final 12 months. And normally when that does happen, you have the understanding that they will be going. But uh, yeah, I don't know if we could have forced to let Rudiger go, considering that I think to have a competitive squad that is challenging on all fronts, you do need to have a combination of players in their prime. And Rudiger's 28 years old. You know, his prime will last until, what, 32 years old. Um, he'll be an even better player too over the next few seasons. And I get the impression that he would commit here. So let's see what developments do happen. Let's hope that Marina and the club can, you know, find a package that would satisfy Rudiger. Um, personally, I think he does deserve that. And... Yeah, you guys, how do you feel about that too? Would you be happy if Rudiger was to stay? Or would you understand if he was to leave? Because I think another interesting thing too is that on the market currently, there are so many excellent, interesting centre-back options that maybe you could find replacements for them, even though they would be incredibly expensive. So you guys, on that note, I'm going to wrap things up, keep things moving. Thank you for watching. Of course, tomorrow there's going to be the match preview for the Aston Villa game. There'll be more content coming out as well. So stay tuned, you guys. On that note, I'm in the EFC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos. Cool.